Scripture heard read in your hearing, though, coming from 2 Peter 3 1 through 9. This is Apostle Peter writing to the church. This is his second epistle, and he knows that his days are numbered. After this epistle, he did one more day. He was killed, he was martyred. Uh, you can please stand for the reading of God's word. If you can't stand, God understands, but if you can, please rest on your feet. Amen. In respect of God's word. Amen. It's amazing how we'll stand at a concert for hours. Clapping and raising our hands for these demons. But when it comes to almighty God. Mm, it's a challenge. Peter said in verse 1. This second epistle beloved I now write unto you. In both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles, of the Lord Jesus, the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. Haters, that's another word. For those of you in this day and age, scoffers, haters. <laughs> and saying where is the promise of his coming you know we've been saying that Jesus said he's coming back but they said where is the promise of his coming he said for since the fathers fell asleep since they died in the Old Testament he said all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for this they willingly are ignorant of that be that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Come out the flood of Noah. But the heavens and the earth which are now that we live in, by the same word are kept in store. Reserved up to fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise that he's coming back. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and do his holy work. Let us pray. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. Once again, thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to be used as an empty vessel. Lord, speak to your people. Open their hearts, minds, and ears, Lord. Let them know it's not my words, but your words that have power, Lord. So they will be edified and you will be glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I want to use for a thought today a time to remember. I want to talk about a time to remember because it's, it's Memorial Day. Memorial means to remember. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. A time to remember. You know, God gave us a whole lot of memorials to remember Him by when He left. He would tell us to do things. He said, as often as you do them, do them in remembrance of me. That's what he said. But today, 
we know it's Memorial Day weekend. Amen. But, you know, I was listening to a guy tell a story. He said, but what is the meaning of Memorial Day? And he said that a large group of high school seniors were touring the Capitol in Washington, D.C. on Memorial Day. Amen. And the guy asked him the question. He said, what is the meaning of Memorial Day? He said, what does it mean to you? And they thought about it for a minute. Some of them said it's the day when the pool's open. Mm, wow. Oh, yeah. The other one said <laughs> and that is when school ends and the fun begins. Wow. In the Memorial Day, you know school is out. And it's on the beginning of summer. And that's sad. Because studies show that only 25% of Americans know the meaning of Memorial Day. To most people, it's all about barbecues and picnics and pool parties and all these things. But Memorial Day is about remembering. Amen. Why is it so important that we remember? Because we are so easy to forget. Amen. We got the shortest term memory there is. Amen. It's amazing. It's just like somebody want to borrow some money from you. I'm not kidding. He'll tell you, look, I just need your help. I just need your help if you do it. Come payday, I'm going to pay you. And they serious. I mean, they, they need it. They need the help. You want to help them, so you give it to them. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. Payday come and go about three or four years. Mm -hmm. Now listen. If you bring it up, mm -hmm. you ain't no good. Mm -hmm. Why would you even bring up that I owe you money? Mm -hmm. Why would you even bring up a whole different attitude when they ask for the money. Okay? That's why I say we need to remember. <laughs> remember the state we were in when we needed the money? Right. Why is it now you a bad guy because I, I asked you to give me my money back? Come on. That's why God said when you give it, he said don't give nothing you can't do without. Because when they don't give it back, don't hate them, don't, you know, just, just you know what you do? Don't never again. You know, we, we got no problem. You don't owe me nothing. We good. We straight. We gonna have a drink and a picnic and everything. We got a food party. Yeah. Just don't ask me for no more money. Amen. You can ask me for anything else. Mm. Amen. See, that's how that works. Yes. But is that true? Mm. We forget yes. what state of mind we was in. Yes. Amen. Amen. But it's all about remembering. It has the word memory in it. Amen. Memorial Day. Amen. Amen. But it's easy to forget the price that was paid for our freedom. We're talking about in a worldly sense right now. Memorial, right? right? Especially when we didn't have to pay the price. Mm -hmm. See, it's easy to forget when it don't cost us nothing. We can casually sit back, amen, and in the backyard, barbecues and the pool party. But me, the meaning of Memorial Day is that 1.5 million men and women died. Yeah, amen. That's what memorials is. It's about remembering those who sacrificed their life for our freedom. Amen. 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 The reason you can have a pool party and buy backyard barbecues is because there was never a war on our soil. Amen. Amen. That's because somebody was fighting on somebody else's soil. Yes. Amen. If it wasn't for them, they would have been over here taking over. Yeah. Amen. 1.5 million men and women died so that we might have our freedom. So Memorial Day is a day, it's a time to remember. Yes. Amen. 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 For us to pause, right? Mm -hmm. And remember and be reminded of those men and women who died and honor them and give them some glory. Amen. Amen. Give them thanks for what they did for us. They fought and died. Amen. Amen. For the things that we enjoy. Yeah, amen. 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 Now it started during the Civil War. I'm going to give you a little history. When the women began to decorate the graves of the fallen soldiers. Mm -hmm. Amen. It was called the Day of Decoration. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then on May 30th, 1868, the day was designated as Decoration Day. Mm -hmm. A day of the place. They placed flowers on the grave. Amen. Of those fallen soldiers. And, and the Confederate and uh, the Union soldiers. Decoration Day gradually became known as Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. Amen. The soldiers who died 
in all the wars. Now we commemorate all of them. Amen. And quickly became Memorial Day. Amen. When all the people who had died in defense of the country in 1971, mm -hmm. 1971, Congress declared Memorial Day a national holiday to be observed the last Monday in May. And that's why we have tomorrow is Memorial Day. Amen. And we must remember that freedom is not free. Amen. Amen. It's because we didn't do nothing. It didn't cost us nothing. It cost a whole lot of people everything. Amen. People died so that we can live. We have opportunity to make decisions today because of the sacrifices they made yesterday. Okay? And that's what Memorial Day is about. So when we look at the text that Peter wrote in 2 Peter 3, 1 through 9, he's talking about remembering too. He said, I want you to bring it back to your remembrance. Uh -huh. Amen. I want to stir up your memory that you remember the words of the prophets in the Old Testament and what we told you in the New Testament. He said, don't forget it. Amen. Amen. He says, a time to remember. He said in the second epistle, verse 1 again, Beloved, I now write unto you, in both which it, I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. It's time to remember. The, look, 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 look. the memorials God gave us in his word and the commandments that God gave us in his word. It's time for us to remember them. And why do we need memorials? Why? Because it's so important that we remember and stop being uh, forgetful. Turn on. Oh, that was... <laughs> got this thing on. On everything all over the place. The devil is a lie. Amen. Okay. Amen. Hey, now why do we need memorials? Why is it so important that we remember? Okay. For many people, Memorial Day is just another holiday. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But like so many things in this life, Satan has perverted yes, the yes. things of God. Yes. Think about it. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Christmas is about what? The birth, the birth of Christ. <laughs> they want you to take Christ out of Christmas. They say it's Xmas now. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's all about you running up your credit card mm -hmm. and buying a whole bunch of nothing. Amen. It means nothing. Amen. 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 That's what it's about. So a lot of people have a perverted view of the memorials of God. Amen. Amen. But it all actually began with God. Amen. The Lord is the very beginning had always established a memorial for us and a time of remembrance for his people. Mm -hmm. And since we are commanded to give honor where honor is due, yes. today I want to talk to you about God's memorials. Amen. We already talked about man's memorials, amen, yes. which is important, but God's memorials are more important amen. than man's memorials. Amen. Why? Because God's memorials are eternal. Amen. 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 When you leave here and be dealing with man, no more. Amen. amen. So the first word that God gave us, the first memorial that he would give us was the rainbow. Yes. The rainbow back in Genesis. Now I know the LGBT and took the rainbow. Mm -hmm. But it belonged to them. Amen. Okay? It's God. It belongs. They try to mix the sacred with the profane. Yes. That's what the devil does. Yes. He tries to pervert everything that God does. Okay? But if you look at it, God made a covenant with man back in Genesis. And every living creature on earth that he would never flood the whole earth again. Yes. And if you look at Genesis 6 and 1 through 8. Amen. And, and then 9, 12, 14, you'll see in Genesis 9, 13 through 16, Satan has tried to pervert it, but it ain't going to work. Let's go there. Genesis 9 and 13. Well, let's do 9 and 12. says, And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is within with you for what? Perpetual generations. That's, that means unstopping generation, from generation to generation, okay? I do set my bow in the clouds. You see that? Yeah. That's where it came from, okay? And it shall be for a token of covenant between me and the earth. 
And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the boat shall be seen in the cloud. Mm. And you probably ain't never know why a rainbow come up there. But you know now. Amen. Amen. God did it. And you will only see it when there's clouds and, and rain coming. Amen. And I will remember my covenant. God said when you see the boat, he going to remember his covenant he made, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the boat shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. This was set up as a sign to remind us that God keeps his promise. Amen. So every time you see a rainbow now, you need to know that God put it in the cloud. Amen. Amen. And it's not just for our sakes only, but he said when he see it, God said when I look at it, I'm going to remember. Amen. Amen. We talking about it's time to remember. Amen. Amen. But many take it for granted. See, we see the things of God and we don't even know what we're looking at. Why? Because we're unlearned. Amen. We see the things of the devil. We don't know what we're looking at. We participate in demonic rituals and don't even know. Amen. Many people, I said, we, I don't anymore. I used to too, but I know better now. Amen. 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 But a lot of people today are falling away from the church. They've fallen away from the faith, right? Leaving the church that God established and commanded that we would remember what? The Sabbath day. That's a memorial. He said, keep it holy. He said, remember, don't forget it. Why? Because you're going to get so busy with yourself doing your own thing, which is about nothing. Without God, do you know we can do nothing? Amen. He said we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. Right? Amen. But the Bible says that he said, without me, you can't do nothing. Why? Because I'm the reason you live and breathe. Amen. 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 And as soon as something happened to you, who do you call to? Oh Satan, help me. So oh, oh Father of Darkness. No. You said OMG. Oh my God. He said, Well, where are we? Oh, oh, I'm your God. See, he didn't forgot he was your God. Why? Because you ain't never Come on. gave him no praise and honor. Praise the Lord. But guess what? He the kind of God he'll ask you. Yes, Why? Because he, he is love. Amen. 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 I said, be glad. Amen. 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 But look at what Hebrews 10 and 23 said. Because people say, well, you know, the Bible don't tell us we need to go to church. I don't have to go to church to be saved. I say, praise the Lord. Anymore, I just say, praise the Lord. Because what happens is when people don't know something, they just don't know. So ain't no need of you arguing with them or trying to convince them of something they don't know. He said, you don't cast your pearls or swine. Okay? They, they ain't going to understand it. Don't, don't even worry about it. But he said, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. He said, if you profess to be a child of God, mm -hmm. hold fast to it. Oh, yeah. What that means is do what people, children of God do. Amen. <laughs> Look what he said. Yeah. For he is faithful that promise. God said, I'm faithful. Mm -hmm. I promise, right? And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works. Amen. He said, I should be provoking you. Mm -hmm. He said, when I'm trying to encourage you to... to Spend time with God to come and lift up your hands to pray, to read scripture. He says it's going to be just like I'm provoking you. Why? Because you don't want to hear it. Amen. Right? He said provoking one another unto love. Good works, right? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. As the manner of some is, but exhorting, encouraging one another. And so much more as the day. We see the day approaching. The day of what? The day of judgment. It's coming. The Bible says that everyone is going to stand before the judgment seat of God and be judged for the things done in their body, whether they be good or evil. That's the word of God. He says, appointed to every man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. So dying ain't the problem. 
Amen. It's the judgment that comes after. It's the problem because that's going to be determining where we spend eternity. Because yeah. see, the Spirit of God that dwells in us cannot die. Amen. You cannot die. So it's going to spend eternity. The Spirit is going to spend eternity somewhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But he said the Sabbath day, it started way back in Exodus 20 and 8 with the children of Israel. We know that. He said they weren't supposed to work or anything. And, but see, no one keeps the Sabbath day today. Come on, Lord. You know, I know seven days been and said, well, y'all, y'all not having church on Saturday. See, Saturday is the seventh day, if you didn't know that. Sunday is the first day of the week. Right. Okay, and I believe, just as the scriptures that Romans, the Romans who called the church the Roman Catholic, which was not the Roman Catholic, it was a holy Catholic church. They took everything over, and they said, that, well, you know what? We're going to have them have church on the first day of the week instead of the seventh day of the week. We're going to defile God, right? So the seventh day of Venice, say everybody who's not uh, having service on the Saturday is going to hell. But that's just because they're ignorant. they unlearned. They don't know the word of God. Amen. So if you look at the word of God, we know that Saturday is the seventh day. Amen. And Sunday is the first. But before we condemn everybody, including myself who is in here today on Sunday, mm -hmm. let's look at scripture. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we need to understand that the Sabbath was made for man. Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. Amen. Okay, we don't want to get it twisted, lean into our own understanding. Okay. So in Mark 2, and 27 says, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the son of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. What he was saying is David and his men was hungry and they was walking through the field. And they began to take ears of corn and eat them, but it was Saturday. Yeah. So the religious hypocrites, the leaders, was like, how, how is it that, that David's men is eating? They pulling corn and eating on the Sabbath day. And that's what he told them. Sabbath was made for man. That's what they were saying. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. But I want to give you a little more. Romans 14. Romans the 14th chapter verse 4 says, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? You see that? I'm not your servant. I'm the servant of the Most High God. Amen. He said, Who are you to judge my servant? He said, To his own master he will stand or fall it. Right? Yea, he shall be upholded up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteems one day above another. Another esteem every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And I'm going to go, let me go a little further. I haven't convinced you yet. In Colossians 2 and 16 is what nails it down. Because he says, let no man therefore judge you. You see that? You see that? In what? In meat? Pork? You eat pork? I love bacon. They said, well, you're not supposed to eat pork. The body told me everything is good for me to eat. Amen. Amen. That was the Old Testament. He said, I can eat some pork. I can, I can bless it. But he said, don't nobody judge you in meat or what you drink. Or in respect of what? A holy day. Or of the new moon. Or of the Sabbath day. The Lord have mercy. It's in the Bible. Amen. It's in the Bible. So no. You 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 worship God. He said, I want you to take a day. Yes. Alright? I want you to come together as a body of believers, a family of God, and I want you to worship me. If your day is Sunday, then so be it. Amen. Just keep it holy. Amen. 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 We know people work on Sunday. They can't be here. Mm -hmm. right? But see, I notice no one has ever had an argument about when the football game come on on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Or a college football on Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's never been a problem. Why? Because that's man stuff. See, we love to glorify man in whatever they do. Amen. But when we get in trouble, we don't call LeBron. Next time you, you need your hospital bill paid, call LeBron and tell him, you know, just ask him if he'll pay it for you. If you can get through. 
because he's not going to do it. But you can sit there and cheer and raise your hand, sweat and scream over a basketball game. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. I used to be that person. I'm so glad I'm not that person anymore. Amen. I'm so glad I know better now. Amen. Amen. And nothing wrong. You still can cheer and enjoy the game. Just give God the same Amen. more glory than you give them. Amen. It's wrong when you do it for man and you don't got the time of day for God. That's when it's wrong. Amen. He don't mind you doing it. Amen. Amen. But he wants to get our priorities straight. Yes. That's all. Amen. The Sabbath day is about rest. It's about making time to honor and glorify God. Amen. That's all it's about. And he said, I just want you to do it one day a week. Yeah. You, you shouldn't be acting like no devil the next six days, but at least one day a week. If you come out and do this, I can keep you honest. You, I can bring you back. You see what I'm saying? Because we've been dealing with the world. Head be messed up. Amen. I need to come and praise God. And get my head right. And I thank God for it. Amen. And we don't do it just because of what we want God to do for us. We do it because of who God is. Who is he? Is he your all in all? Is he your creator? Is, is he the one that's giving you the ability to gain wealth? Because that's what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. It's God. You're not getting paid from your employer. Amen. Amen. I respect my employer. I go to work every day. Amen. And give them the honor that they have due. Amen. But I know that my money comes from God. Amen. So if I don't even have that job, God told me he's going to take care of me. Amen. 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 He'll bring it some other way. Yeah. But because of who God is, we give him glory. Amen. 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 Now the last one, because this is going to be a series because it's too much here and we'll have to deal with it next week, which is great because we got communion because that's another memorial. Amen. But this one, he talks about the Lamb of God. In Exodus 12 and 11, he talked about the Passover Lamb. He said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt. You remember the plagues that God brought in Egypt? Because he told him, God said, let his people go. Pharaoh said, I'm not letting you go. And when he did say he wanted to let him go, the Bible said God hardened his heart. He, wouldn't, he said, no, because I'm not going to let him let you go. Because when I get you out, you're going to know it was by my strong right hand. He's going to say, you know, God did it. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. You're going to give me the glory, right? So he said in, 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 in that verse 12, he said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Amen. So now he wasn't talking about just the firstborn of Egyptians. He was talking about the firstborn of anybody. Jews and Egyptians. He said, I'm going to send the death angel through. Mm -hmm. In this play, because he was done death playing with Pharaoh. He said, I'm going to kill the firstborn. But then he said, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Mm. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you what for a Y'all, boy, y'all, y'all don't act like you can read. I'm, I'm trying to get you to preach this thing with me. You act like you don't even can't even read regular English. We talking about memorial, a time to remember. What do the words say? Man. Okay, so when I do that, I need y'all to work with me. Stop acting. Amen. Amen. Like you can't read that word, but he says it's gonna be a memorial, and you shall keep it in feast. To the Lord throughout your what? Generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So he said, I want you to take the blood of the Lamb if you believe in me, whether you Jew or Egyptian. And I want you to put it on the door of the doorpost. 
Everybody is inside that house. You didn't have to be a good person. You just had to be inside that house. Amen. He said, when the death angel see that blood on the doorpost, uh -huh. he gonna pass over that house Amen. and go to the next one. Okay? That was a memorial. Ain't that right? Amen. So when he talks about the memorial feast was set up in Israel and Egypt, but he was talking about our memorial who? Jesus Christ. Who is our Passover lamb? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. See, what he did was he put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Right. I'm reminded when Paul, when, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming in the New Testament, he said, Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. Amen. 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 So when Jesus shed that blood, and we receive it, we covered by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. The death angel is going to pass over us. You understand what I'm saying? And groan to somebody else that's not, not covered with the blood. Amen. Amen. We're going to die physically. Yeah. Everybody is going to give up the ghost physically, so say the Bible. Amen. Everyone is appointed once to die. But after that, the judgment to decide where you would spend eternity. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're talking about. Amen. So when we look at that, we rem <laughs> we're reminded of how well God has worked this thing out. Amen. And we're talking about memorials. Yes. Memorials are a day of remembrance, right? right. We know it. We, we, gotta have to, we have to remember that God didn't have to die. That's true. He didn't have to do it. That's so true. He said in his word, no man can take my life. He said, I'll volunteer and lay it down because I got the power to lay it down and then I got the power to take it up again. He said, that's what I'm doing. Don't, don't get it twisted. Amen. He told Peter, you can put up your sword. See, when they came to get him, and old Judas, that traitor, he kissed him. He said, oh, Lord, they coming to get me, right? Peter took out his sword and cut off the ear of the servant of one of the gods, right? And Jesus picked it up and put it back on. He said, Peter, he said, that's enough. He, he said, if you live by the sword, he said, oh, you can put your sword up. He said, don't you know, Peter, that I could call two legions of angels down and kill everybody in the world if I wanted to do that? He said, I got to let them take me because I came to die. You see what I'm saying? So we don't want to forget who God is. God is the source, the song saying, the strength of my life. Is that right? He moves all things, misery and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. Mm. And he's never ever come what? Short of his word. <laughs> he never came short of his word. And he never will. Amen. Not for those who trust him and believe. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, the memorial, okay, is a time of remembrance. Yes. When you have your barbecue, see, we had a pool party the other night. Had a good time, too. Oh, that mercy. And I uh, ate a lot, a lot of barbecue. Sun threw down, my other son, both of them can cook. They threw down, and boy, we had all the good food, and well, I won't say the good music because I'm kind of, but anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, not my house, but my party, so I couldn't say that. But anyway, uh, but it was a good time, right. good fellowship, right? right? But we need to, God don't mind us doing nothing, having Amen. a good time. Amen. He don't mind you going to watch a three-hour movie. Amen. God don't mind you spending time with your family. He don't mind none of that, right? right. He just don't want you to forget right. about Him. Amen. He said, "Why are you? I'm blessing you to be able to do all these things, and you to forgot about me." Mm. I just try to tell people, Lord have mercy. It's right. Why? Because I told the young man, he said, well, you know, don't worry. One day I'm going to come up in there. I said, you got that right. You go, they're going to roll you up in here. Or you're going to walk up in here. But you coming. You're right. You're going to be the guest of honor. They're going to open the cab. You're going to be looking real good, made up real good. But you coming. I said, but I, I, 
thank for your sake. You need to walk up in it Amen. before they have to roll you up in it. Yes, Amen. So you have the right place to go. Amen. And as I get ready to close, people of God, we only got two places that we can end up. Come on. And I many of you know it. You don't need to be a Bible scholar to know this. Amen. You know it's heaven and hell. Right. right. It's heaven and hell. Amen. It's simple as that. This is what I want to leave you with, though. You don't know what you don't know. Come on. But ignorance of the law mm -hmm. is not going to be an excuse right. not to do time. Amen. Right. Why? Because he gave you the whole volume of the book. That's right. And he said that you need to study it. Yes. Not to show yourself approving to me. Right. But to show yourself approving to God. Amen. A workman that need not be ashamed. That can rightly divide the word of truth. What do you mean by that? There's over 4,000 religions in the world. And 90% of them stem from the Holy Bible. Amen. So that means there are a bunch of quacks. They'd have been led by the devil. They took the word of God and perverted it. They don't know the truth. Amen. Okay. But he said, if you study the Holy Bible and you learn the truth, then I'm getting ready to close. But Jesus said in St. Matthew, uh, no, St. John, I want to say, 8 and 31. And I'm closing. Because it's, the rest of this I'm going to have to deal with next week. Because, you know, it's just, I don't want to rush it. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If I ask you right now, you'll probably tell me, Pastor, I believe in God. Is that right? Yes. Amen. Most, most people meet on the street say they believe in God. Amen. Like that means they're saved. Mm -hmm. That don't mean you're saved. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said, if you continue in my word. Now, now this on the board, but in your Bible is red. Why? Because Jesus is speaking. Mm -hmm. He said, if you continue in my word, uh -huh. then you are my disciples indeed. Mm -hmm. And you shall know the truth. Why? Because I am the truth. The way in the life. And the truth shall, shall set you free. Praise the Lord. So he said that to those Jews who said they believed on it. What did he say? He said, if you don't continue my word, you might, you're not my disciple. You can say what you want. I don't care. If you don't continue my word, you're not going to know who I am. You're not going to have a relationship with me. Right? And you're not going to be my disciple. Why? Because you're not going to know the truth. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But faith comes by and hearing by. You ain't dealing with the word of God. You got no faith. Amen. So says the Bible. Amen. See, I didn't stick with the script. I, I don't. I don't know no other way. Amen. But all I'm saying is, go go down there. Go go to thirty three. Then answered him, We be Abraham's seed. These are these same scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, that's going to end up crucified. Mm. We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. Lie, lie, lie. It was in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. They was in bondage in Babylon for 70 years. So you know they just don't know what they, this is the same thing you get on the street. People don't even know what they're talking about. Amen. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. Amen. And they're talking to Jesus. Amen. How sayest thou ye shall be made free? He goes. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whoever committed sin is the servant. What is he talking about? He said anybody who's continuing to practice on purpose, okay, as a lifestyle to sin, okay, you're not a servant of God. You're the servant of sin. Which means you're the servant of the devil. That's what that means. Keep going. He's telling them, but they only hear. And the servant abides not in the house forever. But the Son abides forever. If the Son, see, he said, if you, you've been saved by the Son, okay? Jesus is my Son. He said, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free. 
If you become born of the Spirit of God, covered, you accept Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, which is the Son of God, yes. he said you'll be free indeed. He said, that mess y'all talking? You're going to tell your story to walk it. Why? Because you're not coming up here. He said the only people coming up here has been set free. has been set free by the blood of my son Jesus. Okay? And with that being said, when we talk about memorials, a time to remember, this is what he wants us to remember. But go on a little further because I want you to see, you know, Jesus got into the dozens with him. He gets to talking about the dad and everything else. He said, I know that you Abraham seed. He said, I know you was born Jews. I get that. He said, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. He going I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. You see what I mean? He said, I'm talking about the word of God. I know the truth that's going to set you free. You dealing with what you do according to the enemy of this word. Say that, okay? Look what he said. Go ahead on. They answered and said unto him, I Abraham is our father. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Amen. Abraham was the father That's of right. faith. He said, If you was Abraham's seed, you'd have faith in God. And you'd be worshiping God just like Abraham did. He said, but oh, no, that's not who you are. Go ahead up. <laughs> but now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you what? People don't like when you tell them the truth because the truth hurts. Okay? Look, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Right? Go ahead on. Say, Abraham didn't try to kill me. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then says they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. You know they just told Jesus? Mary was pregnant. Out of wedlock. You ain't never the bastard. That's what they told him. We wasn't born of fornication. Ain't that called? But they talking to Jesus. He said, you just call. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Keep going. 43. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my words? Go ahead on. Ye are of your father, the devil. See, he going he to just go on and tell him plain as day now. And he's going to stop playing words with you. Hallelujah. Your father is the devil. Okay? And the lust of your father ye will do. You're going to keep doing. He was a murderer from the beginning. And a bold not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speak a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. That's one. And because I tell you the truth. You believe me not. Mm. Come on. Praise the Lord. That's enough gospel right there to save the whole world. Yeah. All it is is the word of God. But you you can't have faith in it when you don't hear it. Amen. When you don't study it. You don't read it. People of God, I'm trying. The, the song says I'm just a nobody. Yeah. Trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Amen. 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 So this Memorial Day holiday, this weekend, please take the time to give God some praise. Amen. Just for the fact that you are standing here in your right mind. Thank you, Jesus. With shoes on your feet, yeah. clothes on your back. Thank you. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Breathing in and out God's air. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? And because by His grace and mercy we have not all been consumed. Okay? The only reason we're here today is because of the grace of God. So all I'm asking you to do on this memorial day is give God some praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All I'm asking you to do. That's all you want. Amen. So with that being said, I'm going to get ready. We're standing. We're getting ready to get out of here. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity.
to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you haven't done it, this is what it's about. The Bible says anytime the gospel is preached, that we are to give people an opportunity to be saved. Why? He said, because whenever two or more come together touching the grief of Jesus, agree in Jesus, say, I'm in the midst and I'm ready to save some. Amen. And for those online, if you want to be saved by the blood of Jesus, all you have to do, the Bible says as close as the words in your mouth and the presence of your heart. You got to have, so you got, your heart's got to be right. Uh, I was telling a young man last week that we always try to fix things on the outside. But it don't work that way. We can try to stop cussing. Stop drinking. Stop sleeping around. Stop stealing. Stop lying. Stop fornicating. Committing. We just try to do all that stuff. The problem is we don't have the ability or the power to stop it. We can't do it on our own. Jesus said, I'm standing at the door of your heart knocking. If you open the door, I'll come in. Yeah. Right? He said, if I come in by way of my spirit, I'm going to give you the power to deny yourself. He said, something you can't do. He can do anything. I know because I'm a living witness. So he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Not head belief, heart belief. Because when you believe something in the center of your being and your heart on the inside, he comes in and what he does is he changes you from the inside out. <coughs> you can't change from the outside in. That's impossible. But he said, I'll change you from the inside out. If you give me a chance. So if that's you today, I want you to just repeat after me this prayer. Now we can hear the words, but we don't know your heart. Only God knows your heart. Because he promised that if you believed it in your heart, he said, I'll save you. It's just that simple. So if that's you, all you got to do is say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I've, I've sinned against you. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus. Father God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he was dead and buried for three days. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead. I believe according to the Holy Scripture, that if I die believing in you, Lord Jesus, and on my last day, you raise me from the dead. Yeah. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life. And I ask that you save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. According to the Bible, not me, if you made that confession and believed it in your heart, Jesus said he came to reside on the inside. He said, you've been born again. Not of water, not of your mama, but of the Spirit of God. So, I encourage you to find your good Bible teaching church, those online, or you can go to Solid Rock Ministries, lv.org, and we'll be glad to help you in your new life in Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a hand.